Our last speaker is Roland Lam. He is a designer and entrepreneur. He's building a seriously cool new musical instrument, which you will soon read about in the pages of Wired. Um, March issue working out. Um, but the lessons he's learned from building that instrument, he's applying to other products, which use sound in exciting new ways. Um, so Roland, yeah, tell us a bit more. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And events like this are great because you have an opportunity to talk in a very speculative way. So I'm going to offer some speculative remarks about the, the future of sound, and particularly the future of musical sound. Um, now, uh, in order to talk about the future of musical sound, one has to ask the question, what is music? And obviously, this is a contentious issue about which much has been written. You know, sometimes people think of music as the subset of sound that um, is pleasant. But we might recognize uh, something that sounds horrible, or that sounds painful, or that um, sounds difficult, but we still see it as music. So others might say, um, music is the subset which is a kind of intentional use of sound. Um, and I think that gets closer um, to the truth. But actually, I think what really defines music um, is sound uh, that allows us to build a bridge um, between our experience of the internal and the experience of the external. So um, talking about, uh, you know, we heard um, something very scientific about the brain, but um, in a completely ascientific way. Um, one can notice that the brain is the most um, plastic thing uh, in the world. It's the thing that is able to um, most quickly make um, the most connections and reconnections. Um, and historically, particularly um, in, a, in early stages of technology, it's frustrating to um, have a plastic brain that's capable of so much um, and live in a world which um, is resilient to that plasticity, that you can't change quickly and you can't um, adjust quickly. And um, of all of the things within our sensory landscape, the thing which we actually have the most immediate control over and can change the most quickly and easily is sound, um, which is one reason why music is um, such an ancient part of the arts and, and really was quite advanced even in an ancient context. So, so if music um, is this thing that allows you to um, commune from the, the internal experience of consciousness to um, s a sort of external good that can be shared, um, then what is, the, what is the future of music? So we're at this moment in the history of technology where suddenly computers are becoming much faster, they're becoming much smaller, they're becoming much cheaper, um, and we have all kinds of new sensing technologies as well. So tra in traditional musical instrument design, um, there were many limits uh, that were placed on um, how we could actually make sound. We could make it with wind, we could make it um, you know, with a string, we could make it with some kind of percussive effect. Obviously, um, digital music has changed that. And what's defined the history of music has been obviously many you know, economic and social factors and migration. But a key aspect that's defined music has been innovation in musical instruments. So um, it's difficult to imagine rock and roll without the introduction of the electric guitar, or to imagine contemporary pop music without the introduction of the synthesizer. And so when we look forward into the future of music, partly we're um, wondering what will be the instruments that will emerge? How will we use these instruments? And because of the changes that have taken place technologically, um, we, can, we can actually imagine a, a musical future and a future of musical instruments that's much more plastic. So almost anything that you can imagine um, could be created. And different sounds that previously were yoked to a given physical um, restraint can now be attached to other physical conditions. So I want to offer um, three criteria for what will make successful instruments in the future. Um, I've been uh, working for the last few years developing new musical instruments. Um, and what I've learned through that process is to make um, new musical instruments that have a chance of, of succeeding um, and being adopted and then actually having an impact um, in music, um, they need to meet three conditions. Those three conditions are that they need to be bandwidth increasing, they need to be physically intuitive, and they need to be archetypally limited. So I'll say a few things about each of those. Um, bandwidth increasing means that basically um, right now in this moment in technology, um, our brains are really fast, computers are really fast, and often the bandwidth of interaction between um, our minds and computers is defined by the ways that we physically interact with those computers. So if there's ways that um, 
new sensor technologies can increase the bandwidth of interaction, um, then what that will do for us musically is allow us to um, actually engage even more with the music in such a way that the listener will hear it. Because um, part of what we enjoy when we listen to music is hearing the, the, the experience of communion or the experience um, of interaction of a performer. You know that great music has, um, it has the, the, the reverberations of that experience um, in the sound itself. And so if we can increase the bandwidth of interaction, we can in some ways increase that experience of communion that a performer might feel, um, even in a digital context. Um, secondly, they need to be physically intuitive. So the instruments need to be designed, I, uh, most of all, around our hands and in relationship to our hands. Because um, along with our tongues, so much of our brain activity is connected to our hands. Um, and yet, unlike our, our, our tongues, our, our hands are um, infinitely ro reprogrammable. We can retrain them and reprogram to do different things. And we can, over years and years and years of practice, refine them. Um, so our hands are a key element in uh, creating a conduit from our minds um, to sound. And um, like Kant, for example, said that uh, the hand is a window into the mind. But really, the hand is a gateway between the mind and the world. Finally, um, they need to be archetypally limited. So they need to be connected to certain archetypes of instruments um, because the bridge between what we know in music and what is new um, has to be built slowly. And um, something that is created entirely de novo will be very, very difficult um, to master or to understand or to develop the culture and habits around um, that don't exist. Um, and they need to be limited because um, the, the experience of communion or the experience of um, like an intense relationship between a performer, um, an instrument, and a sound has to be based on um, fundamental limitations. If you try to build something that can do everything or that can be very easy to use, um, it will end up uh, doing nothing. So that's my um, prescription for um, three key criteria for the successful future um, instruments which will create the future of music. Um, and thank you all very much.